is a story that must be told about two ladies that are kind of old. One's a pastor, the other is not. They like to chat, cook, and pray a lot. Oh, chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, pray. Lots of fun. Tuesday on Facebook Live at one. You'll never know what will happen when Lucy and Ethel are at it again. Oh, chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, pray. Amen. Oh, it's still going. Hey. Oh, oh, oh chat. Cook and pray, oh, chat, cook, pray, amen. Did we scare ya? Here we are, Zorro and the witch. And you notice I didn't need to wear a mask. I, I just, this is, this is my, this is my costume. And this is my, this is my friend, Ricky Rat. I thought it was Ratatouille. Or maybe, well, no, he's oh, too he ugly. Mean. Yeah, Ooh. so we just want to say hi. Okay, so we're going to be doing the special, special cookies today. No bake cookies. Marty's going to tell you all about it. Candy. Oh, I'm Truffles. sorry, candy. Truffles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it's got all this good stuff here. And while uh, she's mixing this up, I'm going to read to you the story of Zorro because it's very interesting, the background of Zorro. If any of you watch the Zorro movies, I remember, I, uh, or the TV show, it was always so neat. So anyway, this witch is gonna go around and get her story. And now I give you Zorro oh. the chef. Yes. yes, yes, oh, wait a minute, I got wrong. Oh, <laughs> I see what the problem is, I had two. <coughs> oh okay. my goodness, Just this is so safe. funny. Yes, she's got her she's got her plastic gloves on. Yes, they and, and I, now I can't believe she's actually doing this with her mask on. Oh, I can see. But she says she can see, but you can't hardly see her eyes. But <laughs> I'm I'm trusting that she can see it. Okay, I went ahead and started creaming the butter and the brown sugar because you need to. Stir those for a very long time so that they are nice and creamy so that your truffles won't be too crunchy. Anyway, so I'm gonna just add to this, I'm gonna add the teaspoon of vanilla. That looks good. I like vanilla. I like that. Yeah, all right. And so I'll just mix that a little bit more and then after I mix a little, mix this in, I'm going to add in alternating the flour and the Eagle Brand milk. Okay. So here we go. So she's mixing in the vanilla. Oh, it smells so good. And it actually, oh, these, these are very addictive. Okay, now I will open up. Let, let me open that. I don't think you do it with your, can you do it with your gloves on? Yeah, because this one has the nice oh, okay. little tap thing. There we go. All right, you did it. I did it. Oh, let me see. Oh, so many people already on. Michelle's on. Linda's oh. on. Aaron's on. Oh, I thought it was the hamburger. <laughs> she thought you were the hamburger. <laughs> Randy, good afternoon, everyone. Jamie is watching. Uh, oh, my gosh. Don, San. Uh, Chad is watching. Oh. Uh, we just got a whole bunch. It's really fun. Yeah, the hamburger. That's kind of what you do look <laughs> like. I never thought of that. Oh, that's too funny. Uh, too, too funny. So you go back and forth with the flour and the... Yeah, the Eagle brand so that it <coughs> doesn't fly. <laughs> that choked you up. Uh-huh. Oh. You talk too much today. You were on oh, I know. Zoom I had Zoom all meetings time. all morning. You oh. all, that's so tiring, let me tell you. Did it make any more intelligent? No. Oh, good, good, good. It drained my 
drained my intelligence, yes. Okay, while she's doing this, I'm gonna start reading to you about Zorro. And hopefully the beaters aren't that loud. Yeah. Zorro is Spanish for fox. And uh, it was a fictional, mm. Zorro was a fictional character created in 1919 by American pulp writer Johnston McCulley and appearing in works set in Pueblo, in the Pueblo of Los Angeles during the era of Spanish California. So when we read about or see Zorro, it's happened sometime between 1769 and 1829. He's typically portrayed as a dashing masked vigilante uh -huh. who defends the commoners and indigenous peoples of California against corrupt and tyrannical officials and other villains. His signature all-black costume, look at you, except yes. you do have the red on the inside well, of your I cape. All-black costume includes a cape, a hat known as a sombrero cordobas, mm -hmm. and a mask covering the upper half of the face. In the story, Zorro has a high bounty on his head, but he's too skilled and cunning for the bumbling authorities to catch. And he also delights in publicly humiliating them. Oh, yeah. Oh, like you do that. that all the time. You don't have to be Zorro. I know. Because of this, the townspeople call him El Zorro oh. due to his fox like cunning oh. and charm. Oh. Zorro is an acrobat and an expert in various oh, weapons. That. Kind of pushing the envelope but the me. one he employs most frequently is his rapier, which he uses often to carve the initial Z on his defeated foes <laughs> and other objects <laughs> to sign his work. He's also an accomplished rider, his trusty steed being a black horse called... Do any of you remember what Zorro's black horse was called? I don't hear it. Tornado! Tornado! Zorro is the secret identity of Don Diego de la Vega, originally Don Diego Vega, well, big difference, a young man who's the only son of Don Alejandro de la Vega, the richest landowner in California, while Diego's mother is dead. In most versions, Diego learned his swordsmanship while at a university in Spain and created his masked alter ego after he was unexpectedly summoned home by his father because California had fallen into the hands of an oppressive dictator. <gasps> Diego is usually shown living with his father in a huge hacienda, which contains a number of secret passages and tunnels leading to a secret cave called the Fox Den that serves as headquarters for Zorro's operations and as Tornado's hiding place. In order to divert suspicion about his identity, Diego hides his fighting abilities while also pretending to be a coward. Okay. All right. I don't remember him pretending to be a coward. Zorro was his, made his debut in a 1919 novel, The Curse of Capistrano, originally meant as a standalone story. But it was so successful that in 1920, the first Zorro film was in 1920. Yes, and who played in that? Uh, hold on. The 1920 <laughs> film adaption, The Mark of Zorro, starring Douglas Fairbanks. Fairbanks who convinced Macaulay to write more Zorro stories for about four decades. The character was featured in a total of five serialized stories, 57 short stories, the last one appearing in print after the death of the author in 1959. The Curse of Capistrano eventually sold more than 50 million copies, becoming one of the best-selling books of all time. While the rest of Macaulay's Zorro stories did not enjoy the same popularity, as most of them were never reprinted until the 21st century. Oh, that's weird. The character also appears in over 40 films and in 10 TV series. Oh, the most famous. See, I remember this one. The most famous being the Disney-produced Zorro series of 57 to 59, starring, does anybody remember the name of the star? Guy Williams. That's who it was. Oh, he was good looking. Other media featuring Zorro included stories by other authors, audio, radio dramas, comic books and strips, stage productions, and video games. Being one of the earliest examples of a fictional masked Avenger with a double identity, Zorro inspired the creation of several similar characters in pulp magazines and other media, and is the precursor of the superheroes of American comic books, with Batman drawing particularly close parallels to the character. You know, that's true. Batman does remind me of Zorro, only oh, he yes. has those pointy, that pointy ears and yeah, mask. Yeah, pointy head. Yes. 
Okay, so now tell me what you're doing. You finished okay. doing the I finished Eagle mixed, brand and the, the flour. flour. And now I'm going to add in three-fourths cup, oh, two-thirds cup, I think it is, I told you all. It called for a half a cup. I didn't think that was enough, so I added more, and I thought they were better. So I'm going to stir those in. Okay. Stir that Bill Wooten asked if we enjoyed the snow yesterday. Oh, it was it pretty lovely. to look at. It melted very quickly off the roads. It was on the, the grass. But it's awfully cold, but it's slowly warming up. Yes, so that you can have your outdoors. We'll surface. send it to St. Louis. Yeah, That's we'll what we'll do. We'll share. And then I'm going to add in the chopped up walnuts. I can't stop thinking of you as Hamburglar <laughs> and not Zorro. We needed a paper on. Hamburglar has to I'm, have the, red, the white and black striped shirt. And, you know, oh, like that's a, right. You know. That's right. That's right. Hamburglar has the striped shirt. Yes. And he wouldn't okay. be wearing a cross because he's a thief. <laughs> Unlike Zorro, who's a good guy. Protecting the people. Okay. Let me tell you a little more about Douglas Fairbanks, who was the first... Zorro of the film adaption in 1920. Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, on their honeymoon, selected the story as the inaugural picture for their new studio, United Artists. So Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford started United Artists. Um, okay, beginning the character's cinematic tradition. The novel was adapted as the film Mark of Zorro, which Fairbanks produced, co-wrote, and starred in as Diego Zorro. The movie was a commercial success, and the 1924 reprint of Macaulay's story used the same title, The Mark of Zorro, instead of The Curse of Capistrano, yeah. capitalizing on the movie's popularity. The novel has since been reprinted using both titles. Oh my goodness, some of these things are just so interesting. Uh, Fair Fairbanks picked up the movie rights for the sequel, The Further Adventure of Zorro, uh, that next year. Okay, now while Marty is, uh, then, or while Zorro is putting in the stuff, what else oh, have yeah. you put in now? I am adding some deep bar crunch. Oh, wow. Hey, pour me a little in my hand. I just didn't see it. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now you're going to eat that? Uh -huh, I'm, I'm hungry. Okay. Okay. Okay, so she's adding that, and she added nuts, and she added little chocolate chips. Mini chips. And is that it? That's it. Okay. And I got the mini chips on sale at Heidi for 90 cents. Okay. I knew she'd be giving us a, <laughs> a sale job. Yep, yep. Okay, so here I'm, I'm looking again. Bill doesn't, doesn't want the snow sent up there. Too bad. Oh, too bad. We'll send it. We'll down. try to. Okay. Zorro's visual motif is typically a black costume with a black flowing cape or cloak, a black flat-brimmed hat known as a sombrero cordobas, and a black mask. It says sackcloth mask. Well, that that's because then they also have one that goes over his hair. But since my head's small and the hat covers it up so well, I didn't really think I needed to do that. Actually, you guys need to take a look. She does actually have eyes, even though they're hidden behind that mask, but at least she doesn't have her chef hat coming down over her eyes. I mean, come on. Okay, so, uh, and a black sack, sackcloth mask that covers the top half of his head. Sometimes the mask is a, a two-piece, the main item being a blindfold-type fabric that slits for the eyes, that's you, and the other item being a bandana over the head. You don't yeah. have the bandana. No, I didn't. So that it is covered even if the hat is removed. This is the mask worn in the movie The Mark of Zorro and in the television series Zorro. Other times, the mask is a one piece that unites both items described above. Why are they talking so much about the mask? Okay, Zorro's... Oh, okay. Here's another thing. Uh, this mask was introduced in the Mark of Zorro in 1940 and appears in many modern versions. The, the Zorro mask also has occasionally been shown as being a rounded domino mask. I don't know what that is, which he wore without wearing a bandana. In his first appearance, Zorro's cloak is purple. His hat is his hat 
is generically referred to as a wide sombrero, and his black cloth veil mask with slits for eyes covers the whole face. His favorite weapon, of course, is a rapier, which really what she's got is a pirate sword, but we're going to count it as a rapier I today. Point, you know, they quit making those to sell probably because they were, they were so, so pointed. They were, they were dangerous, which he also uses to often leave his distinctive mark, a Z-cut with three quick strokes on his defeated foes. He also uses other weapons, including a bull whip and a pistol. Oh, I'm glad she didn't bring that today. <laughs> That, that would have been that good. That safe at home. <laughs> oh, the bull whip, you know, well, that, that would be kind of dangerous. The fox is never depicted as Zorro's emblem. It's used as a metaphor for the character's wiliness. His heroic pose consists of rearing his horse, Tornado. You can't... <laughs> often saluting with his hand or raising his sword high. Raise your sword high. The logo of the, the, logo of the company, Zorro Productions uses an image of Zorro rearing on his horse, sword raised high. We don't have the horse with us today. No, he wouldn't come in. Zorro is an agile athlete, an acrobat, using uh -huh. his bullwhip as a gymnastic accoutrement to swing through gaps between city roofs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, this is funny. I would love to see us do some of that. Oh, in some versions, Zorro keeps a medium-sized dagger tucked in his left boot Ooh. for emergencies. Yeah, no, that won't work. He's used his cape as a blind, a trip mat, and a disarming tool. Zorro's boots are sometimes weighted, as is his hat, which he has thrown, frisbee style, as an efficiently substantial warning to enemies. But more often than not, he uses psychological mockery to make his opponents too angry to be coordinated in their combat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We do have the real Zorro here today. Um, let's see. Macaulay's concept of a band of men helping Zorro is often absent from other versions of the character uh, in Macaulay's stories. Zorro was aided by a deaf mute named, named Bernardo, in Disney's Zorro television series, Bernardo's not deaf but pretends to be and serves as Zorro's secret agent. He is a capable and invaluable helper of Zorro, sometimes wearing the mask to reinforce his master's charade. Okay, okay now what do we got? I'm going to melt this chocolate in the microwave okay. and then we're going to create our... Well, actually, I need to put on gloves. Yes, you do. Okay. And you need to come over here also. But what we're going to do is, I'm going to uh, start to melt this. Okay. And then we have to make our little balls of stuff up. Okay. This is too much fun. Here I am. See, I want you to see my little rat. It just keeps climbing down my cloak. I don't have anything to say about this witch. Well, other than it's a pretty fancy hat. Yeah, well, you know, it's really kind of a sorcerer's. Oh, I'm more of a sorcerer. sorcerer. Yeah, I've kind of, kind of explained you around here. Okay. All right, now, what I have here. Is this a small fly swatter? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I'll show you. Okay, what we're going to do is. Okay. We'll use this later. Okay, now, I know you. I know you. Yes, you do. Okay. Now, what we'll do is we're going to take this dough. Now, I've never done this with gloves on. And you're going to make small little balls. We can make a little bit bigger net. You don't want to make them too big because I did on the others. And they're kind of kind of rich. rich. Yeah, they're kind of rich. I would okay. think so. All right. Okay. So Just to make them, let me see that. I can't, my, our hats, our hats are hitting. You see about this oh, I size. see that, okay. And then just put them on this piece of paper. I on mean, the a little blue and foil. foil. Yeah, oh, this is hard. I know, it has to be. Okay, so after you make that, you stick it in the refrigerator, right? Yes. The, so you're the, not, we're not gonna make making balls out of that. that no, because it's, we didn't, it says, the original recipe said that you were supposed to take this Gloves of stuff and make the balls out of it. Well, let me tell you, that's a mess. Oh, is it? 
Yes, because then you have to put them in the refrigerator before you can. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> that's the, it takes a while because they stick to your plastic you know, we gloves. We may have to abandon our gloves. We may have to abandon the gloves. Yeah, that, that this is too hard. I mean, you know, you did wash your hands, didn't you? Yeah, and I washed my hands. Yes, and so did I. Hi, Steve McDuff and Elaine are watching. Uh huh. Jody's watching. Brandy, my niece is watching. Okay, I'm abandoning the gloves. Are you going to abandon them? Yes. Oh, okay. My hands can breathe again. Well, it just is hard to roll them that way. Yes, it is. Because they, they just slide I, all over it. They just, and they get wrinkly in there. And yeah. Okay. And this is so cold. That's okay. Trust me, this way we skipped a step and we don't have to make them cold before we dip them in the chocolate. Oh, I got you. See, now these are going to be dipped in the chocolate. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Oh. <laughs> are you I, weak? I am weak. I've had too many Zoom meetings. This, oh. is, this is one of those days where, you know, they does just this keep going on. Ethel and Lucy show? It kind of does, the old chocolate ones. But except, thank goodness, we don't have a conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. No, we would have lost on that deal. Yeah. Yes, we would. All right. I tell you what, though, it sure looks good. Oh, it is good. And I can see where you wouldn't want too big of a no. piece. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit out of that one. All right. Ooh, that smells good. Okay, get in here. Wow. Fun, fun, fun. It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. All right, so what we want to hear is, if any of you, if you're not making them today, if you're going to try them, well, have, we, have we made it tasty enough for you? Or have we just scared you? <laughs> Lori's watching. Hi, Lori. Okay. Randy said something about we're hamming it, or something about ham. I don't understand. I, don't so I think it's because we're hamming it up or something. I don't know. He's probably just lonely there at home with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Wow. This is good stuff. See, she didn't use any egg. That's why they that's don't why need to be cooked. No, and that's why you can eat the dough. That's why you can eat it. Okay. Because I thought of Erin when I saw this recipe. I know. She would have said, It's got raw egg. You can't lick the spoon. And that's never stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe that's what's wrong with us. We lick <laughs> too many spoons with egg on it. <laughs> well, that's okay. There's worse things to have happen to you in life, I guess. All right. This is going right along here. Yeah, it is. Kind of like the Ethel and Lucy version. That's right. Yeah, I made these up the other night. I guess it was Saturday night. I made these up uh -huh. and... Uh, Change my recipe a little bit to make sure it works. See, that's how big they are. Just tiny, about an inch maybe. Yeah, about an inch. And that way they just pop in your mouth. And we found out what an inch really looks like in diameter when we ordered those Christmas ornaments that time. <laughs> that was that was that was <laughs> not sad. pretty. It was, was sad. sad. They look so pretty in the picture. Yeah, they really did. That's when we learned how to measure. <laughs> yes. Okay. I couldn't believe they'd sell. Well, they were 69 cents a piece. I well, guess we should have figured it out. I that. guess. But anyway. 
Well, I hope all you kids out there are going to have a safe Halloween. I don't know. What are some plans that people are doing for if you're having trick-or-treaters? Are you not planning on having any? Keeping we're, your porch light turned off. We're going to set up a card table in the driveway. And then we're going to set up by the garage doors in costumes. And Oh, Lori said I eat raw cookie dough too, but only when I've washed the eggs well before cracking them open. Uh, well, I don't think it's the shells that have anything no, to do with it, does it? It's no, because it's you the, shouldn't eat it's raw eggs. It's the guts of the egg. Yeah. But I did it all my life. Don't remember ever getting sick from it. Well, if you did, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're getting through this pretty good. I good. know. This makes a lot because I already made about 20 out of this batch. Oh, I bet you that thing makes close to 100. Did you get tired rolling before you got it all done? Well, you can't eat them. And you just need to keep them in the refrigerator after you make them. Randy says somebody named Felicia Nunez from Germany oh, yes. is trying to find us the link on Facebook, but she can't find it. Oh, tell her to look at Bethel United Church of Christ dash Kansas City. Dash Kansas City. And then she can find it. And they were from Paraguay, and they've now been assigned to Germany. I see. And they have I'm going to see if Ricky the Rat wants to take a little bite. You think so? I don't think he does. No, he doesn't like it because no. it did have eggs in it. Oh, wow, oh. look at that. Poor dancing rat. Okay. <laughs> Becky's watching. Hi, Baxter. I'm in my, uh, I'm supposed to be a sorcerer or Sorceress. some kind of witchy sorcerer. And this is Ricky Rat. And we are making these little chocolate balls yeah candy candy, candy. truffles Truffles. and i liked it because you didn't have to bake them yeah that was the okay. best well, we're all right a jar of these. there we go oh there's so many of them i know <laughs> yeah, now just... after we put the chocolate on them do we still have to put them back in the refrigerator yeah we should but we can eat one can we yeah, because they set up pretty darn fast, actually. With this cold dough? Yeah, with the cold dough. Otherwise, you'd have to, after you made the doughs, if the doughs, if you made the dough, <laughs> and made the little balls out of that batch I mixed up, you'd have to put them in the refrigerator for a couple hours. I well, see. Well, you know, you know me, I wasn't going to do that. No, you weren't going to do that. Okay, I think we got enough for, no. You got All the right. rest? I got the rest. You got the rest. Oh, wow. Okay, now. All right. Oh, gosh, now. this is scary. We've got to dip these things. Is now, that what that fly slaughter's for? Yes. Now, I bought these little tools. Okay, now where do we set them after we dip them? Well, we're going to set them right back on this sheet. Oh, so right. we'll scoot them back down this way. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. They can pile up. It won't hurt them now. Okay. And it's tough. We'll just pile them over here. Okay, now, okay. I'll let you use this tool because I tried this, but I'll just show you. I put them in there, and then I just roll, roll them, around, them around, and then just... Wow! That's a lot of chocolate. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there you, you go. want me to use this one? Yeah. So I drop it. this in first, roll it around, then kick it in. Then kick it up. Now, I haven't used this tool before. Well, that doesn't look like it hold it. It looks like a fly slaughter. Okay, I'm going to show show this. Look at that. Uh-oh. Wait, it's going to drop. <laughs> it's going to worsen around. <laughs> I'll make you use the fly. Okay. Screen. Hey, you all. It's kind of fun. Yeah. To do this. Yeah, it is. I meant to bring some samples in. Samples? Yeah, I had some that I made at home. Oh, okay. And I took some to... I sent some with Randy over to Jeremy's on Sunday. Okay, now tell me this. What what was this again? This was bark? Yeah. Chocolate bark. bark. And yeah. I just followed the directions on the uh, on the package as to how long to microwave it. Okay. It's very creamy. Yeah. And uh, slick looking. Yeah, and then it'll... 
I didn't use this brand. I used Walmart's brand for the stuff I made earlier. This is the one from Price Chopper. Okay. But I figured it's gotta be about the same thing. Wow. Oh my goodness, these look good. Yeah, don't they? See my little fly swatter? You know, I bought a more expensive tool from from uh, from Joann's. It was uh -huh. a Wilton brand. And I decided, I thought, well, let me check and see if they don't have them over it, because they only had one. And I said, well, shoot. I thought, you know what? I'll just go over and see. move that bowl over that way so we have, there we go. And I thought, I'll just go check Hobby Lobby. And so sure enough, Hobby Lobby had them, and they said they were 30% off. So I went over and got them, and they were these little tiny things like this. I thought, oh, this isn't going to work, but you know what? They do. I, it works just fine. They work fine. So the bigger tool would work if you were doing, you know, those chocolate-covered Oreos or something uh -huh. heavier like that. Yeah. But I'm afraid I'm going to get my cake, your cake? in the chocolate. Your cake in the chocolate. Okay. Here, I'll throw these over here. I'll there we go. Oh, my goodness sakes. These are quite yummy looking. I yeah. can't wait to eat one. Or two. Or two mm -hmm. or ten. Actually, we may have to stuff it outside the back door for a little bit to get it cold. Or I could take it in the sanctuary. It's pretty darn cold over there. there. No, I think we can open the back door and set them out there to get, yeah, them, to, to get them to set up real fast. Set up fast. Let's see. Kathy's watching. Hi, Kathy Corn. Becky says, hi, Aunt Caw. You are a hoot. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> I feel like a hoot. <laughs> All right. Do you often dress up for Halloween? Uh, no. I usually do. What a surprise. That was one of the costumes I wore to a neighborhood party. and they This one here? Yeah, nobody recognized me. I had a mask. Well, I was going to say. I had a mask also. You guys don't recognize me, do you? Our, my face is, doesn't it look wizard-like? Mm -hmm. Okay. It did looks. <laughs> Okay, get, get another. some of these in here. Okay, this is going to be, I think, about the right amount of chocolate. I kind of judged by what I had done in the past as to what I was going to need to, for the amount of... Oh, la, la. okay, so what kind of nuts did you put in here again? You put walnuts. in the heath stuff? I put in heath. Heath, walnuts, walnuts, and what else? Walnuts and the mini chocolate and chips. And the mini chocolate chips. Heat bar, crunched up, mini chocolates, mini chocolate chips, and uh, let's see. Now we're going to have to really work This on is it. Debbie. Debbie's watching from her mom's house, I think. You guys look great. Thank you. I'm thinking I probably need to wear this sometime when I preach. Yeah, if you were outside doing that. <laughs> it was cold last Sunday. Yeah. And I was so proud of the people who came and the parking lot and we got our congregational meeting done. Yes, we did. I was very pleased. I was really glad of all the help Gary gave us on that. Okay. Yeah, and some of you zoomed in to get your votes to us. It's a new world. Now, let's see. We may not have enough. Oh, I think we will. Uh, that's good. We can get them. We can get it. Let's move this over here. Okay. And then put the rest. Of, we can get those last three. Throw them all in at one time. Okay. We're going to get the last three. Well, here, they probably want to see this. Okay, so this here's... The of magic. Yes, here's the last three little things. And we're going to get them all covered in chocolate. And then, oh, looky there, it's going to work. They're going to have plenty of chocolate, too. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, what did I do? I used, I don't know how many I used five of the little squares. Five of the little squares. Well, I guess these were oblongs. Let's Rectangles. See. Philip Frank is watching. Do you know Philip Frank? No. Okay, hi, Philip. I saw that he liked us on Facebook Sunday service. How can you help it? I mean, look at us. 
Aren't, aren't we something to like? <laughs> We're something. We're something. Hey, you know, if someone's dialing in for the first time. <laughs> oh, that's going to be scary if people haven't ever well, watched Let me this. tell you something really kind of funny. I went to, um, I went to Hobby Lobby looking for little Halloween treat bags. Uh -huh. And somebody recognized you from Chat, Cook, and Pray? No. Oh, okay. They do not sell any Halloween things there. Oh, okay. And then they sent me information on how... Um, okay, I've got to lick this little oh, yeah. thing. Look at this. Mm. Do you want the fly swatter, too? No. I just eat this. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm, that was good. That is good. Mm. Okay. I'm going to set this out in the back door. Okay. You want to open and then the we'll door come first? back. No, I'll open the door. I can do it. You, you can do you it. You just talk to your to your fans. Anyway, this is a, a really super easy recipe to make some really good candy when you're just sitting there with nothing else to do and on um, with your spare time. Okay, they're sitting on the grate. Well, I hope no squirrel runs over there and grabs any of them. <laughs> thinking they're walnuts. I better set my rat out there <laughs> to guard them. Well, it might think that the the, uh, the squirrel might think it's nuts and come out there and get them. Oh, goodness sakes! Oh. That was so good. So easy. Now, well and this is what's going to go in the refrigerator to to get hard. This is the mix that she made. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was just, I mean, you know, not much ingredients, really. Oh, I didn't, you didn't give me any little wipes. Well, here, have a wipe. Okay, thank you. Have a wipe. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my gosh. It's been fun. Yes, for Halloween, I'm going to be a dragon. What? I'm going to be a purple dragon for Halloween. Are you going around your neighborhood? No, I'm going to set up in the driveway and terrorize kids. I used to terrorize kids in our old neighborhood so much so that they would run screaming. <laughs> that was fun. Uh-huh. Okay. I am going to turn. If you sit down over there, I will okay. turn the camera toward you over there. And we okay. Can, we can progress. Here. We can progress. <laughs> Rather than regressing. <laughs> Hi there. Okay. Oh. Okay. There she is. Here I am. With with my wizard hat and my rat. Oh. Got a tail that keeps <laughs> get on my shoulder. <sighs> Put your tail back. Okay, How that's better. You look so much taller than me. <laughs> oh, no. You know, let's just say this. Okay, are you there? Oh, is your seat a lot lower? No. Are you shrinking? <laughs> Why are you shrinking? I don't know. Maybe it's the flat hat. You don't have your, you don't have your chest hat on. We, that gave you a height before. But, you know, at this point, take off your mask so you can talk to people. I can talk to them. Well, you can? Yeah. Okay. I can talk. Because this is... This is... <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you found your inner childhood to be able to... Oh, I know. This is great. Yeah. Okay, you all. If any of you are dressing up for Halloween, let us know what you're going as. Or what you're <laughs> going to welcome people to your door. You know, Kathy Hayes has some really neat Halloween costumes. Oh, I she's bet. Worn it, she's she, worn them at Bell. She's had... What was she last year? I can't oh, remember. Because I was the... I was Herky the Eagle. Yeah, that was a tough one to figure out. I didn't... I couldn't I figure out Hawkeye. what... I I was the It's the Iowa Hawkeyes football team, and it's well, Herky the Eagle. If any of you saw her, did you know it was Herky the e Eagle? I wasn't sure what she was, but... Well, I had this cape, too. Uh huh. It was, and you know, so. Right. Anyway. But, yeah. And then I had a Herky red vest. Yeah. You yeah, know, it was. I had fun. <laughs> I terrorized the kids. Poor I think Lily, we, Lily I think Willis we was so scared that she ran off and wouldn't come down the aisle. <laughs> I think we've sufficiently 
uh, put off our audience with our <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> I've got to put this hat back. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to put our chef's hats on so they then recognize us. Over the top of it. <laughs> Over the top of our hats. <laughs> because, you know, we just don't look the same. We don't. Well, you know, this, this, you know, this week, it's the cold weather. I know. I know. Ooh. But, again, I can't believe it's already the end of October. It oh. just has been flying by. Yes, it has. Too fast. Too fast. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I looked at the calendar and I go like, uh, November 1st is All Saints Day. And That's so I'm right. reading the bulletin for All Saints Day and we got to go down and get the extra candles. That That's right. Tuesday. That's right. And if any of you uh, didn't get the message or have someone, an immediate family member that passed this last year, be sure and call Marty and tell her the name and relationship I have so we can include them. I have 14 listed. Okay, Cindy James. Uh, and Debbie says, or Florence says, I don't know, Debbie's uh, with her mom, I think. I'm giving away candy at Winwood Church for trunk and treat. Oh, that sounds good. Hey, I, we could go over there in our costumes and you know get what? some candy. She's going as a great eyeball. Oh, she told us about that costume. Oh, okay. I thought I'd heard that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. She told us about okay. it. Okay. If any of you dress up for Halloween, send your pictures and we will share them next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're going to be downstairs next week. We're not going to yep. be in our usual place because no. it's voting next week, yep. next Tuesday. Six o'clock, the polls open, at least here, uh, at Clay, or, uh, Clay County, not Clay County, yeah. Yeah, we're Clay County. Okay, we're Clay County. So, and we're, we are a polling place, so that's going to be and taking we, place next and week, and we'll be downstairs. And for those people think about calling us, the polls open at 6 a.m. and that's close right. at 7 p.m. We have had so many phone calls oh, and knocks right. on the door asking about that. that that's uh, right. Yeah, wouldn't it be funny if somebody knocked on the door now, and we went to answer I know. I thought of that. I thought that might really be a little shocking. Okay. I don't see. Hi, Sally. Sally's watching. So is Jan Fittig. Hi, Jan. Wow. That's so cool. Uh, so if anybody dresses up for Halloween, tell it, take a picture or tell us now on here what you dress up as so we can figure out what kind of pictures we're going to be getting next week. That, that would be funny. It would be great. I want to see a picture of the great eyeball. I think that yeah. would be funny. I yeah. really do. I think the person that wears it would be funny even if we... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, it's a giant. They wrote great eyeball, but it's a giant eyeball. Well, great, giant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the kind same thing. Kind of similar stuff. That's Don't you think? Same. I think it is. Yeah, I do too. So do you think those are hard enough yet? I think they probably are. <laughs> you know, go you can tell. I'm a little anxious to try our little chocolate balls or truffles or whatever she called them. Oh, she's got, she's got light. You've got to show the back of your cake. Oh, that's really a wizard one. Randy's I know, but it looks like the Zorro sign. I know. Because it's like. <laughs> okay, so put those on our table here. And you guys will just all be and I'll turn around. She's gonna turn around. I'll hold this side up. Looking at her at her Zorro signs and planets. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's sister made this and she was throwing it away, so I took it. So you took it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. All right. I'm gonna pray before our truffles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All gracious and loving God, we thank you for this fun day. We thank you that when we come together with uh, our friends, it's always a joy, and uh, especially today, as we got to dress up in costume. Uh, thank you for the time that we take to share, and we just hope that all, uh, everyone has a safe Halloween, and uh, everybody comes back from their Halloween adventures, whatever they are, uh, and are safe and See, make, wearing masks. You can wear masks. Now you can wear masks and actually have faces on. So just watch over all the children 
and all the parents and let us have a, a wonderful celebration. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. okay. So here I go. Oh, it's a shiny little bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, they are hard already. Mm-hmm. Wow. Isn't that pretty? The hooves are very good. Mm-hmm. They are very good. And I think they're a lot cheaper than the bottom one. They're, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, it didn't use any egg. No. So you just pop them in the refrigerator. And then you eat them. That's great. Hi, Pat. Now, I will tell you that the Walmart chocolate almond bar is a little bit darker of a chocolate. Uh -huh. And the one from Price Chopper is... More milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. that, that, but I can see where if you made it much bigger than this... Oh, it's just a little overwhelming. Oh, it's a little, done that. little too much. I wish we could give each of you one of these because they really are good. Well, I've got to cut it off at one. Because mm -hmm. they're a little... Mm -hmm. They're rich. You can eat them for breakfast, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are good. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, see, you all can make a bunch of these and put them in little bags for Halloween. If you knew the kids. Dress them up. If you knew the kids. That's okay. right. Where does the pine go? I don't know. I do not know. I thought we were going to be zip, zip, zip and be done with this in 30 minutes. Well, just think how long it would be if I hadn't have beat up the sugar and the butter. That's right. Because you that said that takes a, a long time. It took about 15, 20 minutes. Wow. Why so long, I wonder? The well, sugar that's and the, butter. the sugar and the butter to make it creamy enough. Oh, Otherwise, okay. my first one was kind of crunchy when you ate it. I mean, it didn't hurt any. I mean, it still right. tasted good, but the creamier is better. Yeah. Okay. Do you have things in those eyes? Oh, I have <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that dude>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, It looked like your mask had plastic. <laughs> it was her glasses. Oh, I, that's too funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was good. Kelsey Michelle is watching. You know Kelsey Michelle? Maybe it's somebody who's joined us. <laughs> Terry's watching. Hi, Pierre. Your niece, your nieces, I think Brandy, Becky are both watching, and your daughter, Erin. So, anyway. They I'm, still claim you. They still claim me. Maybe <laughs> not after this. This might be the end of it. Yeah. This, this, I'm sorry I tapped your glasses with my finger. I'm just glad I had glasses on the eye. Oh, I just thought, well, what an expensive mask. They've got glass in the... They were an expensive mask if you count the glasses. <laughs> oh, goodness sake. Well, before we go today, I do want to read you another entry into Emerge Blessings and Rituals for Unsheltering. Uh, and this is called Blessing for Mixed Feelings. And I think so many of us during this time have had so many mixed feelings. You know, it just seems so hard to not be able to be real with people, shake their hand, uh, offer a hug when it's needed, and even come back to in-person worship, which uh, we have no plans to do I, at this time. I can't believe it. Huh? No plans to do that. It's going to look like... <laughs> I don't know you what... might have had it the last part a little faster oh, at this time. Oh, at this time. We have no plans to do this. Oh, you thinking that that meant ever. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes I'm not going to like it. <laughs> but uh, I, I do have to say, I think... The, we are taking all kinds of precautions. Uh, Missouri Mid-South Conference is uh, getting ready to send out a uh, notice that uh, they are hoping that people will not return to in-church worship for Christmas Eve because that could be a very dangerous thing. So we just keep following the 
guidelines here in, in this area, which the numbers just continue oh, to well, go up and we, up and up. We have to remember our main thing is safety. safety. And, and safety, for, for those uh, that we consider the most vulnerable who are sometimes w wanting to be back first. And so we just have to rely on doing the right thing and not being too quick to, to well, open up. At least we can do cook, chat, pray. We can them. do cook, chat, pray. We've done our outdoor services for How many of those are you going to continue to do, huh? huh? But the outdoor services? Yeah. After the one last week, I think, <laughs> it, you know, that was a that was a chilly one, I'll have to say. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, I want to read to you Blessing for Mixed Feelings. And this is by uh, Pastor, UCC Pastor Molly Basquette. Uh, she always has some, some great ways that she expresses herself. And she starts this with, with saying, God, they say feelings are a package deal. The yuck and the yum come bundled. God, they say that all feelings are from you. It's what we do with them that matters. But what do we do when our feelings come not tidily, trust, but not tidily trust, but messily tangled? like a fine silver chain that won't be undone no matter how long we labor over it. It sits in a box waiting for a miracle worker. I take them out again, the pile of feelings, and this time I ask you to bless them before I begin the work. Bless the anger and the irritation. Bless the gratitude and the joy sparks. Bless the compassion and the selfishness, the fear and the courage, the gloom and the hope, the listlessness and the purposeful action. Bless the love in my life and bless the distance, both emotional and physical, between those I would reune with. Bless the stress and bless the serenity. Bless it all, the whole mess, and remind me that having a rainbow of feelings is your light prismed into spectrum. I feel a little more ease now. I can see where to begin, to gently untangle, pull there, push there, rest there, and find how it all fits together in one unbroken, beautiful strand. And we will find out how it all fits together. Just maybe more time, but I think in, in being in this moment of time, we've had to learn about ourselves more and how how we can become more patient, uh, how we can become more understanding, and become safe in all the practices that we ask everyone to use. The masking, the uh, washing of hands, and the distancing. Those just need to continue uh, all the time. Well, it's made us much more resourceful. Yes, it and, has. And made us think more of how to do things differently. and. And some of these things aren't going to go away. We're yeah. going to continue doing them. Right. But and we would have never done them before because we would have said, oh, I don't have time to do that. Right. Right. So it is interesting how you change and, and how you all are, are probably also noticing how you've changed during these last seven, eight months. It's been a much longer time than any of us ever expected at first. And now we realize it'll uh, be even longer. <laughs> yeah. So... We just hopefully have gotten to a point where we can work our way through it by having, uh, still having our connections, although they may be distanced. Uh, you can be on FaceTime. Hey, you can call. Hey, but look how much money you're saving on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know that I ever spent much money on makeup. Oh, maybe that explains a lot. That explains a lot. <laughs> Oh gosh, but anyway, we were happy to see you again today. I hope that you enjoyed the recipe. Believe me, it's amazingly good. So you'll want to do it for a party or something and add a little ghost and goblins since we can't have real people all together. <laughs> Invite all those uh, poltergeists that may be around the neighborhood and you know, that's, that's how you can use them or your own family if they're into sweet treats like this. Yeah. So they are, they're wonderful. I uh, thank Marty for coming up with this recipe and showing you how we can work together without 
dropping the food or, or having to stuff our mouths full and not having to stuff our mouths because it's going you know yeah yeah on the uh, conveyor what, belt conveyor belt yes that's right okay so we're gonna gazoo you out I think this is mine oh, aren't yeah. I red yeah I think you are red I yes you're red, red. Thank you're you. red yes you're, you're foxy red I'm foxy red yeah hold on I gotta get this over my I can't get it on over my hat Okay, All right. Now, now you think you're fixed? I okay. think I'm, I don't know. Yes. Nothing's ever fixed with me. All right. Are we ready? I hope so. Have a great day, you all. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>